Okay, so uh, today let us uh, try and see if we can uh, generalize the concepts of uh, the previous lecture to fermions. So, today is going to be uh, the last lecture of uh, this MOOCs course and the topic I am going to discuss is basically uh, of a research uh, variety that means that it is you, know, you would not find this in anywhere else because it is part I mean it is actually based on my own research. So, um, in fact, it is not even the fermion version is only there in my textbook in chapter 12.2, it is not there anywhere else. So, um, remember that in the last class I was telling you that uh, it is beneficial to introduce a kind of non-local version of particle hole creation operator that means you first uh, create a hole then you create a particle both at the same time that means you remove a particle with a certain momentum and in the case of bosons you uh, uh, remove a particle with non-zero momentum and uh, you uh, put it back into the condensate that means you create a boson with momentum um, k equal to 0. So, but then uh, that uh, b that corresponds to basically b dagger 0 b q, but that itself uh, will not be useful. So, I have to uh, see I have to introduce a creation operator which also behaves like a boson. So, if that is possible only if I multiply that by uh, 1 by square root of the number of bosons in the condensate. So, that is what we showed that basically uh, because in the case of bosons it was possible to uh, write uh, uh, an operator called d, d q. There are two subscripts mainly because you see the implication is that for fermions it will be k plus means it the k equal to 0 corresponds to. So, k is always 0 because for bosons the k equal to 0 is special. So, this becomes q by 2. So, there is a redundant momentum label to emphasize the fact that it is possible to have a more general type of object with two separate momentum labels for fermions that is what we are doing today. But I am just refreshing your memory about bosons. So, it has uh, yeah, you might be wondering why there is a redundant momentum label that is just to remind you that uh, for fermions these two need not be related they can be in independent. So, that is because you see the condensate is a single point in momentum space which is k equal to 0, whereas the, the ground state of a collection of fermions is an extended object, it is the entire Fermi C, you see it is all fermions uh, up to a certain momentum value which is kf. Okay, so, the point was that I could uh, define, if I chose to define it like this where you see uh, b0 is nothing but e raised to minus x0 n0 right and n0 is b dagger 0 b0. So, this is the number of bosons in the condensate and uh, x0 is basically canonically conjugate to n0. So, it is one of those funny operators uh, which is canonically conjugate I mean the, these are all very formal issues you know there are some very basic mathematical issues that you have to be aware of. For example, uh, you know there is a well known theorem that says that uh, since n0 is positive definite that means it cannot be negative. So, it, there it is you can rigorously show that x0 cannot be self adjoint. So, you cannot simply postulate that let there be a self adjoint x0 such that uh, x0 co commutator n0 is i because you can show that when n0 is uh, non negative you you cannot force x0 to be self adjoint. So, you can force it to be canonically conjugate, but it will not be self adjoint. So, there are all these issues ok. So, so this is like a physicist version of this uh, this proof. So, I will have to work with a situation where n0 is actually nearly infinity then only this makes sense ok and that is typically the case in an actual condensate ok. So, n0 is macroscopically large. So, I am talking about ground state this is not like finite temperature this is basically the ground state of a boson system. So, if that is the case you see then uh, this is nothing but uh, what is e raised to i x 0 
it is basically uh, given as uh, 1 by square root of n 0 into b dagger 0 which is what that is. So, uh, that is how I define it as like this. So, it is b dagger 0 b q. So, I want to do something similar. So, this you see I showed that this is an exact boson and the point is that remember that if you have products, if you have number conserving products of uh, quantum particles which create and annihilate quantum particles. See that number conserving products will obey closed commutation rules regardless of whether those uh, creation and annihilation are creating fermions or bosons. So, suppose you have uh, C p C q and uh, C p dash C q dash. So, this is always going to be equal to uh, C dagger p C q dash delta p dash q uh, minus C dagger p dash C q delta p q dash. So, this is regardless of whether these are bosons or fermions. So, I could be uh, C's can be bosons or fermions, but the commutator of this will. So, so, even if these C's are fermions, it is still the commutator that is. So, in other words, the commutator of number conserving two number conserving products is a linear combination of number conserving products. So, regardless of whether the individual creation or annihilation or with in regardless of whether they are fermions or bosons. So, that even if they are fermions it is the commutator not the anti commutator. So, uh, so that is the reason why I want to be able to write down uh, you know some version of this a non local uh, number conserving product in such a way that that number conserving product corresponds to an exact boson ideally speaking. But uh, I will not be able to do that uh, at least in this lecture. I am going to give you a hint that it is possible to do it, but it is a two step process. So, first you have to introduce a non local operator which is almost entirely uh, analogous to this, but then uh, unfortunately for the case of fermions it will not be a boson. It will still obey complicated closed commutation rules, but it would not be a boson. So, the question is that then you can you have to further uh, re express that in terms of bosons, which is still an unfinished uh, research problem which I am still working on. So, so those of you are interested in uh, you know collaborating with me on this uh, to finish this research agenda. So, which is basically to make section 12.2 practically useful you please contact me, but let me explain to you what is 12.2. So, it is basically the uh, fermionic counterpart of uh, what I discussed in the uh, previous lecture. So, you see, um, so there is no condensate for fermions. So, instead there is a filled Fermi C that is the ground state. So, the, uh, the momentum distribution that means the uh, all the fermions below K f are occupied and all of them above are not occupied. So, this is the Fermi drug distribution at 0 temperature. So, now you define something called the, uh, an annihilation operator in momentum space which annihilates a, a fermion below the Fermi surface. So, this, this annihilates a fermion uh, inside the Fermi surface and this annihilates outside the Fermi surface. So, you can imagine that uh, this uh, fermion is, uh, uh, so when this uh, fermion acts on some typical element of uh, your Fox space that means, if you imagine your uh, uh, eigenstates to consist of the ground state of the system that is basically a system where all the fermions are below the Fermi surface and none are above the Fermi surface or uh, and then uh, you can add a, a few more states for example, you can uh, uh, take away some fermions near the Fermi surface and uh, which were below the Fermi surface initially and then you elevate them to some momentum states above the Fermi surface. So, thereby you will be creating excited states. So, basically uh, by acting particle hole creation operators on the ground state you can create excited states. 
So, uh, so if you have a Hilbert space of states uh, of that nature, then you can imagine that uh, most of the time you see if you act, uh, act this operator that is the operator that tries to uh, uh, take away fermion below the Fermi surface, it will usually be successful. Whereas, if you try to take away a fermion above the Fermi surface, you will mostly be unsuccessful unless you hit upon the rare state where uh, you know there is an excited uh, electron just at that position. But whatever it is, I mathematically I am perfectly uh, at liberty to differ, define these operators. So, that means I can define an operator which corresponds to taking away an electron below the Fermi surface or taking away an electron above the Fermi surface. So, having done that uh, similarly creation also. So, having done that I define this uh, capital A subscript K Q. So, you see this is the reason why now you have two different momentum labels because uh, there is no notion of condensate. So, I have to deal with the fact that I can create and annihilate uh, you know at two different momentum points. So, here you see the definition is of this nature and remember there was this non-local square root of n. Here also there is a square root of n, but here this n has the n0 it was there in the case of bosons. In the case of fermions this, this corresponds to yeah, this n0 you should not confuse. This is the total number of particles which is a constant total number of fermions. Yeah, unfortunately, I have not been very consistent with notation. See here n below 0 means it number of bosons in condensate which is yesterday last lecture earlier lecture. So, whereas n superscript 0 is total number of fermions of today's lecture. So, you see the idea is that this n greater uh, basically counts the number of particle hole pairs. It basically tells you that diff so this is the number of fermions remaining below the Fermi surface and this is the total number of fermions. So, the difference is basically the number of fermions above the Fermi surface which is basically the to total number of particle hole pairs because every time there is a fermion above the Fermi surface there is a hole below the Fermi surface. So, that is also counts the number of particle hole pairs. So, basically you see this is the whole point. So, this is a, a non-local particle hole creation operator which uh, keeps track of the uh, number of particle hole pairs that have been created. So, uh, this makes perfect sense of, on all uh, states except uh, the states where there are no particle hole pairs because then this denominator becomes 0. So, then I, I postulate that in that case this uh, a, so this is in situations where I, I do not act it on I act it on any state which has more than one uh, at least one particle hole pair. In that case n greater will never be equal to 0. But in case n greater is 0 that means I am talking about the ground state of the non-interacting system then I postulate that a k q acting on that is 0. So, now with these types of uh, assumptions this all matrix elements of this make perfect sense you know the matrix elements of this have mathematically well defined meaning. So, if they have well defined meaning I in fact you can show uh, again remember that uh, it was very easy to show that in the case of bosons because you see it was just simply uh, d was just uh, some unitary times the b. So, it was easy to show that uh, b dagger b dot 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 means different different momentum labels same d, d dagger d because this will cancel out I mean this e raise to i x dot if you pretend x dot is Hermitian it will cancel out. But then uh, this was easy in that case, but it is not so easy here because not only you, you, have, you have summation also, you have to actually prove this. So, I am not going to prove this here, uh, it is left as one of the exercises. What you have to do is just insert this here and uh, insert this here, insert this here and prove that it uh, I mean just do the sigma and show that it is an identity. because. Uh, the right hand side will involve A, but A is defined in terms of the C's. So, if you insert and do sigma, you, you have to get back this answer. 
in fact you can show that you will get back ok. So, here also you will show that it you can get back. So, uh, so basically you see this is the inversion. So, that means I have inverted this and re-expressed. Uh, um, so, you can re-express. Uh, so, that you see after all if you have uh, you have c dagger p c p dash there are, there are only these things. So, the, so in the case of a creation uh, or annihilation above or below the Fermi surface there will be uh, these four possibilities either you do both above uh, or both uh, below uh, or you do one above uh, one below or you do uh, one above one below uh, uh, in the reverse way. So, these are the only four possibilities. So, that exhausts all the possibilities when it comes to creating a particle hole pair. So, you see uh, the if you if both are uh, above the Fermi surface it is expressible in terms of the A's this way if both are below it is expressed, but if one is above one is below it is simple. In fact, uh, you see n greater is uh, is going to commute with uh, c greater. So, you might as well put this on this side because there is no uh, see n greater uh, paradoxically uh, uh, will commute with c greater because uh, n greater is in terms of c less. So, it will commute with c greater but uh, n greater will not commute with uh, c less. So, it will commute with c greater which is something you would not have expected. So, you can therefore, put this on this side and then multiply from the right on uh, with respect to a. So, that means, so basically what will happen is that uh, you see um, uh, a k q multiplied by n greater is nothing but c dagger k minus q by 2 less c k plus q by 2 greater. So, so you see that is the thing. So, so there are four possibilities. One is greater greater less less both are expressed already. So, the greater greater less less I have expressed in terms of the A's and uh, less greater is expressed in terms of A's this way and if you take dagger of this you will get greater less also expressed in terms of the a then it will become square root of n greater a dagger k q. So, that exhausts uh, the ways in which you can express the number conserving products of fermions in terms of these funny a's. So, you might be wondering why am I doing all this first of all you see the commutation rules obeyed by the a's are not simple they are actually not bosons. Uh, so, the thing is that why am I doing this the reason why I am doing this is because uh, you can show that uh, you see the um, the kinetic energy of free fermions which is writable as p squared by 2 m into c dagger p c p uh, can actually be shown to be the same as sigma k comma q k dot q divided by m a dagger uh, k q a k q. So, in other words you see this is the fundamental reason why this is useful. So, the kinetic energy which was diagonal in the fermions is also diagonal in these very funny complicated A operators. See these A operators are very non trivial because they are non local. You see there is this n greater which is measures the number of particle hole pairs which is itself an operator and its square root appears in the denominator. So, it makes it an ultra non local operator. So, uh, nevertheless even though it looks that bizarre because it looks that bizarre uh, it, this is possible see because I have defined it in that peculiar way the uh, kinetic energy of free fermions um, which is diagonal in the original fermions is also diagonal in these operators, but it would have been amazingly beneficial if this A's if these A's were in fact exact bosons sadly they are not. So, what you have to do in order to make the scheme truly useful is you have to uh, find exact bosons. So, you see first of all uh, the A's uh, I have I have been able to show uh, uh, rather easily that uh, um, this yeah, this is always obeyed. 
So, you see if A's were bosons we expect this at the very least and in fact even though unfortunately A, A dagger commutator is not Kronecker delta K, K dash Q, Q dash which is what we expect if A's were bosons. But uh, at least A commutator A with different K's and Q's are at least these this is identically 0. That is something we, we really like it is a kind of a relief. But however, uh, the fact that A commutator A dagger is not Kronecker delta is very unfortunate. Uh, so, but however, in case of the, the analogous construction in bosons, it was already boson, but here it is not. So, you have to work harder. So, in fact, the commutator the version of the, uh, I mean the what resembles the commutator actually looks like this. So, the question is uh, firstly how do you do that? So, uh, that I will try to postpone and explain to you later. That is how do you, uh, you know, construct exact bosons which you can then relate A to. That means, you should be able to write A k q in terms of uh, uh, some exact bosons called uh, B k q perhaps. So, these are exact bosons. So, that means these bosons will have the property that B, uh, B k q uh, B k dash q dash is 0 and also B k q uh, B dagger k dash q dash uh, is equal to delta k k dash uh, delta q q dash times uh, something some constant ok, some, some constant involving k q and all that. But basically it is proportional, so the right hand side is proportional to the identity operator. So, if, if you can find B's like this, uh, uh, then you are all set because you can do lots with this. Because if you do not find this, you cannot, it is very, it is a big struggle because the A's are very non-trivial. So, the question is how do you write this and this is the topic of uh, great urgency now, we have to actually do it and I am trying this uh, on my own right now. Those of you uh, who are listening to this lecture and are interested in uh, collaborating with me, please contact me. Yeah, so, so this is very uh, crucial now. But however, um, even, even in the absence of uh, this uh, very crucial ingredient namely uh, even though we are not been uh, successful in writing these A k q in terms of exact bosons, you can still go ahead and uh, this I am going to skip, I have just told you, uh, yeah. So, you can go ahead and uh, write down the momentum distribution, you can derive the Fermi Dirac distribution in terms of uh, these operators, in terms of A k q's. So, the question is how do you do that? So, I first define small letter a k q as basically uh, this. So, I, I define small letter a k q as basically uh, c dagger k minus q by 2 less c dagger c k plus q by 2 greater. So, this is small letter a k q. So, now you see, uh, now I am going to uh, try and calculate this average. So, in fact, you, you can, ok, let, let us show this. So, this is the definition of this G that I am trying to calculate. So, this is the definition of A k q. So, A k q is basically this uh, capital A k q without the square root of n, ok. So, just without that square root of n. So, it is k, k minus q or 2 less c dagger k minus q or 2 less c k plus q or 2 greater. So, uh, so, you see uh, now I am going to try and calculate this. So, this is nothing but uh, in the grand ensemble it is this, ok. So, now you see the device of introducing uh, this exponential is that when you do an integral over this lambda prime parameter, you will bring down an n dagger, ok, n greater dagger. Okay. And uh, I also choose to define uh, something called the uh, lambda parameterized average of n k, which is basically before taking the average of c dagger k c k you multiply by this. So, the momentum distribution of fermions will correspond to putting lambda equal to 0. So, now you can show that this is nothing but uh, this, 
so this is uh, again uh, it is a bit of an algebra so I will allow you to think about it. So basically uh, the uh, momentum I mean the lambda parameterized momentum distribution which is defined like this is expressible in terms of the g's in this way okay. So now if you are successful in uh, finding uh, this one. Uh, using uh, the properties of the A's not the fermions in, in terms of the properties of the A's then uh, you would have successfully uh, derived the Fermi Dirac distribution using an algebra that is reminiscent of bosons rather than fermions because you see after all what are A's they are number conserving products of fermions. And I have repeatedly told you that number conserving products of fermions obey closed commutation rules. Uh, they do not obey or anti commutation rules. So, you are trying to express number conserving products of fermions in terms of uh, objects that more closely resemble bosons. All right. So, it says uh, you can find this trace using the cyclic permutation and the commutation rules obeyed by AKQ and the Hamiltonians and N dagger and you can convince yourself that uh, this is what it is ok. So, this it comes also the g k q is also related to this lambda parameterized momentum distribution. So, now you see uh, so therefore, uh, this kind of indirectly tells you the uh, so this is some kind of an integral equation. So, if you insert this into this equation it gives you an integral equation for this lambda parameterized momentum distribution. So, which when uh, having obtained that you simply said lambda equal to 0 that will give you the Fermi Dirac distribution. So, it is a it is a lot of work for uh, deriving something we know how to do using the simple Fermi algebra. But uh, you see this is this has been derived using uh, an algebra that is more reminiscent of bosons because see the these ob objects a k q's they are number conserving products of fermions which obey uh, closed commutation rules rather than anti commutation rules. Now, you can convert this integral equation into a differential equation of this sort ok. So, you will have two types of n's one is uh, when k is below the Fermi surface and when k is above the Fermi and I have uh, you know exchanged k for because it is an isotropic system I have replaced k with the energies and density of states and so on. So, this is a standard solid state physics approach. So, uh, so when you do that uh, you can solve uh, these two coupled equations by this sort of an ansatz and uh, when you solve it is again a lot of algebra. So, when once you do that you can show that uh, in the end you get uh, this result. Okay, so, you can show that uh, basically that when you put lambda equal to 0 which is what this is uh, you get the Fermi Dirac distribution ok. So, uh, so the bottom line here is that you see the moral of the story is that this would not have worked if uh, I had not consciously introduced. So, this is something you have to uh, go through these steps in great detail to understand. So, if I had not introduced this quantity which is the one that fluctuates see studying a system of fermions at finite temperature is the simplest way in which you can study the effect of uh, fluctuating number of particle hole pairs. Because you see this 1 over square root of n greater uh, is basically very sensitive to fluctuations in the number of particle hole pairs. So, the fact that this appears repeatedly in the formalism means that it is trying to tell you that you have to be conscious of this uh, object and you have to um, treat it very carefully. So, what this uh, analysis shows is that uh, uh, studying this uh, carefully and uh, self consistently as uh, we often like to say that if you study it self consistently then uh, you are uh, going to correctly obtain the Fermi Dirac distribution. So, if you become uh, kind of naive and uh, try to replace this by its expectation value or you know try to replace it by some average like we uh, have instinctively try to do in physics whenever some nasty operator appears we replace it by its average. 
So, if you try all kinds of those un uncontrolled uh, types of approximations, you will never get the Fermi Dirac distribution. So, the moral of the story is that you have to self consistently and exactly take into account the fluctuations of, of the number of particle hole pairs in a self consistent way. It is only then that you will actually be able to derive the Fermi Dirac distribution, not otherwise. Okay. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, I do not want to spend too much more time because there is not much else I can say which uh, makes uh, any rigorous sense. So, so the current state of the art uh, with respect to constructing uh, particle hole like operators for fermions which you can then use to study interacting Fermi theories is uh, whatever I have explained just now. So, uh, the next uh, important agenda which is unfinished is uh, extremely urgent which is to write uh, the AKQs in terms of uh, exact bosons. So, these BKQs like I was talking about, so they, they have to obey this. So, um, yeah, so those of you are interested, please contact me, we, we have to do this. So, having done this, the, the last uh, item of the agenda would be uh, to write the uh, annihilation operator alone in terms of the BKQs, in terms of the Bs and B daggers. So, this would correspond to what, uh, what is called bosonization, that means you are expressing the fermion annihilation operator in terms of exact bosons. So, you see that uh, that is possible for chiral fermions in one dimension as uh, uh, it is well known in the community and I have uh, YouTube lectures on that uh, separately which is also mentioned in my institute website. So, you can have a look at that, but that is very peculiar to a very peculiar sort of fermion which are called chiral fermions. So, chiral fermions are fermions where the dispersion is uh, completely linear and uh, is proportional to the energy is proportional to momentum and uh, the, there is uh, yeah. So, the ground state of the system has infinitely many particles even if the system size is finite because all negative energy states are occupied. So, bottom line is that um, uh, yeah, so that is a very artificial and uh, you know contrived sort of system, but uh, in absence of anything uh, more realistic people kind of make do with that and in one dimension there is a humongous amount of literature that uses that sort of idea to study one dimensional interacting fermions. So, that goes by the name of chiral bosonization, but what I am displaying here is basically a very much more ambitious way of uh, studying fermions in uh, not just one dimension, we t this could apply in one dimension as well, but it could apply more, more realistically in two and three dimension and that too for uh, fermions of the usual garden variety kind, not the chiral kind. Uh, so, the where the energy dispersion is basically p squared by 2 m. So, so that is the whole idea. So, I want to be able to do that. So, I want to be able to write the Fermi field purely in terms of exact bosons, but then I have to first construct those exact bosons by expressing this capital A k q which I have so painstakingly written down in terms of exact bosons. So, that is likely to be uh, an important uh, first step. So, having done that we can go ahead and see if we can write down the annihilation operator purely in terms of the exact bosons after which we can try and make use of it. Uh, so, that is the whole point. So, okay, I am going to stop here and uh, this concludes uh, the present MOOCs uh, NPTEL course on uh, dynamics of classical and quantum fields. So, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this course. Uh, if not, uh, I do not blame you because you see this uh, subject is rather uh, advanced and uh, I know that many of you who are enrolled in this course are somewhat like beginners and you have trouble following uh, the course uh, which has such a vast syllabus and which has gone at such a 
incredible pace. But uh, you do not have to necessarily learn everything all at once, uh, just uh, you know go through the lectures carefully, slowly pause it and listen to it several times, read the textbook and so on. And uh, if you still have questions about uh, various topics, uh, please send me a mail, I will be happy to answer any questions. So, thanks for uh, listening to all these lectures. Uh, I hope to hear from you. Okay, thank you.